So this bolus is moving around. Your tongue's moving around. Your jaw's moving the bolus. If that bolus is out on your incisors, well, your jaw has brought it out there. You have incisal edge to edge. You're going to be at 30% of maximum. Well, how convenient because your condyle's out of, the, out of the socket a little bit. That's the way the system is designed. It's really great. And as you move that bolus to your molar, you don't have your jaw protruded anymore. The bolus goes to your molars. Your mandible's backing up. And this condyle is more and more within its own safe harbor because some intense activity is about to happen because that bolus is uh, allowing for the intense activity. It's communicating these molars. The circuitry has been completed. That condyle is in up in its safe harbor. It says, bring it on. Nobody chews food way out like this. If they're a class two or class, they don't go like this and chew. The bolus dictates the position of the condyle, the intensity of contraction. The orientation of the condyle will facilitate intensity. The more the condyle backs up, the more intensity there's. Now that's where you have protective reflexes. When your jaw's way out front, no one squeezes very hard. It starts to hurt, so you stop. So the circuitry completion is what dictates the intensity of contraction. See, I'm still using that kind of terminology, intensity of contraction. What's that really mean? It's the number of muscle fiber recruitment, which is going to get rapid elevation unless there's resistance there. Then it's, the rate is dictated by the resistance of the bolus. And the farther this condyle is translated, the more inhibited there are of reflexes to inhibit intense elevation. There's less inhibitory activity the more retruded and seated it is. So during this closing rotation, when you go to close and you're unrotating, this condyle is rotating back to where it's supposed to be during intense elevation against the resistance. It's designed to be there during intensity. The maximum contraction of the elevator without any interference happens when that condyle is in its best seated position and braced. We call it CR. If there's nothing resisting or interfering with the condyle arriving at that position during this, the most intense contraction, the medial pull of that condyle will be braced within that socket. It's a, the design is there for it to happen. It may never happen in some people. It just may never happen. It can. And in chewing food, how often was that happening in our previous slide? Hardly ever. The bolus was all over the place. Every once in a while it would get back there, but hardly ever. It's, it's allowable. The, this uh, knowledge is what allows you to deal with parafunction. You have to assume that the parafunctioner is going to achieve 100%. You want to make sure when, when they're at 100%, because these teeth are going to come together in parafunction, because dentistry is the art and science of how teeth come together. We're going to make those molars fit perfect. If those molars are going to fit perfect tonight, and this thing achieves near 100%, this thing better be braced and seated and protected. We try to allow for that to happen in our restorative dentistry. It's a strategy to deal with probable parafunction. <laughs>